Hi, my name is Ella Larry and I am 15 years old. I have been do doing public presentations since I was very little. Each year, I choose a topic that I love and research to learn more about it. I put together a presentation and present in front of a panel of judges. This year, I was chosen to represent Oneida County in the district public presentations. Cross your fingers this goes well, because this is my unedited presentation. We all love a nice cold glass of milk, but have you ever wondered how it gets from the cow to the store? Well, first, let's start off with some cow basics. There are six main breeds of dairy cows. Ashire, Brown Swiss, Guernsey, Holstein, Jersey, and Milking Shorthorn. Each breed produces the same delicious milk we love, although they each have slightly different components to their milk. For example, Brown Swiss is the largest dairy cow, and their milk is best for cheese because of its fat to protein ratio. Holsteins are the most common dairy cow because they produce the most milk. And Jerseys, although they are the smallest dairy cow, they, their milk is best for butter because of its fat content. So what cows eat? So cows eat something called TMR. TMR stands for Total Mixed Rations. Each farm has their own TMR mixture, which can contain corn, hay, and different grains and minerals to help supplement the cow's diet. Cows also drink about one to two gallons of water per 100 pounds of body weight. That's like a bath of full of water every day. Now that's a lot of water. So milking. So cows like being milked. If cows are not milked for uh, long periods of time, they can get very sick and it's very uncomfortable for them. Milking machines use vacuum systems and pulsators to gently extract the milk from the cow to relieve the pressure that the milk puts on the cow's full udder. As you can see here, this would be very uncomfortable for the cow if it went on for multiple hours. Cows get milked about every 6 to 12 hours depending on the farm they are at. That can be 2 to 3 times a day. Getting started. So before we can get into the milking process, we have to go through the disinfecting uh, process. Although there are different ways to milk cows, the disinfecting process is the same. So first we're going to strip each cow's each teeth to make sure it is healthy, to check for any cuts or bruises, and to remove any debris which was, might have been on the cow from when they're laying down from their bedding or their food. Then I'll, we're also going to check for mastitis, which is an infection in the cow's teeth. After that, we're going to dip which, with a pre-dip, which can be iodine, chlorine dioxide, or other disinfecting agents that are safe for the cow's teeth. If, after the dip is on there for about 30 seconds to a minute, we're going to wipe it off with a paper towel or rag. So milking options. There are five main milking options for milking cows. Hand milking, pipeline, parlor systems, carousel or also called rotary, and robotic milkers. Whichever one the farm chooses is best for their size and setup. So hand milking. Hand milking is the original way to milk cows. It is very easy to learn, but it's not time efficient for multiple animals due to it takes 15 to 20 minutes for each cow. So how it works is you're going to gently squeeze with your, uh, the inside of your thumb and your pointer finger until a stream of milk is released, kind of like this. As you can see, I'm gently squeezing and the milk is uh, releasing from the cow's udder. This does not hurt the cow as long as you are gently. Try not to pull on the cow because that could harm it. So pipeline systems. So pipeline systems are most useful for smaller farms under 100 animals. At a, they can milk about four to six cows at a time depending on the size of the farm. At, at a pipeline system, the machine goes to the cow. And each cow takes about 10 minutes to milk. I got to visit the pipeline systems at Langton Farms in Rome, New York. They milk 45 cows and milk four cows at a time. They collect about 28 pounds of milk twice a day from each cow. And they use a spray disinfecting to disinfect their cow's teeth. So how it works. So how it works is there are pipes that run, run along the top of the barn that connect to a bulk tank. The milking machines have two hoses and the, uh, when they collect the milk, the hose is connected to the pipeline systems and uh, pulled into a bulk tank where it is held, held and cooled until it can be taken to the store. So as you can see here, there are four inflations, which are the things attached to the cow's teeth. The inflations collect gently extract the milk from the cow through the two hoses. One hose collects the milk and the other one is uh, connected to the vacuum system. This cow is a little antsy due to she was unsure of the new people in her barn, just as is if your dogs might be uh, unsure of new people in their house. So next we have a milking parlor. Milking parlors are most useful for farms with over 100 cows, normally at least 250, 250 cows. At a milking parlor, the cows go to the machine, and they can milk at least 20 cows at a time, and it works kind of like an assembly line. 
I got to visit the milking parlor at Findale Farms in Stuben, New York. They milk 1,000 cows and can milk 40 cows at a time. Each cow gives about 26 pounds of milk at each milking, and they are milked three times a day. And they use an iodine mixture to disinfect the cow's teats. So they let me show you how this works. So this is my first time working at a milking parlor. So we're going to go through the milking process. So I'm going to uh, strip and wipe each cow's teat to make sure it's nice and clean and healthy. This cow was very, was nice and healthy. As you can see, this cow's a little antsy because she is unsure of who I was. Always be aware of your surroundings and make sure the cow knows where you are when working with large animals. Once you have each teat done, you're going to dip it with the iodine mixture. Make sure each teat is coated fully to make sure it's nice and clean. Once you have each teat dipped, then once it's on there for a little bit, you're going to wipe it off and they use cloth towels at their farm. You want to make sure you get all of the iodine off to make sure none of it gets into the milk. The iodine is just to clean the teeth. Once that is done, as you can see here, you're going to release the uh, milking machine and the inflations from the parlor system. Once you press the button, it will release it. Then you will attach it on there. Once the machine is on, it takes about 10 minutes for the cow to be fully milked. The machine reg the machine recognizes when the cow is done producing milk and will automatically take the machine off. As they let you they let me show you how that works. So once the cow is done milking, you will auto you, the machine will automatically do this. They let me show you how that worked. It will automatically retract the machine and you will dip it again with the po with the post dip to make sure that the, to keep the teat te nice and clean until the next milking. So next we have a carousel, also called rotary milker. They are most useful for farms with over 500 cows. They can milk 40 to 80 cows at a time. And how it works is it, it slowly spins in a circle while the cows go through the milking process. I got to visit the milking carousel at Curtin, Curtin Dairy in Bridgewater, New York. They milk 2,900 cows and can milk 60, 60 cows at a time. Each cow gives about 32 pounds of milk three times a day. It spins 22 hours a day and takes about 10 minutes for one rotation of the carousel. And each cow has a micro, small microchip in their ear to track the data of uh, when they are milked and how many times they got milked that day. As you can see, this is how it works. The carousel slowly spins while the cows go through the milking process. I'm not sure why that isn't working. So next we have robotic milkers. Robotic milkers can be used at any time of day, and cows choose when they want to be milked. They can be milked one time, they can milk, be milked four times, and it's up to the cow. Any size farm can benefit from milk, robotic milkers, and they are very efficient due to there is very little manual labor needed. I visited the robotic milkers at Talon Farms in Casville, New York. They milk 240 cows and can milk four cows at a time. Each cow gets milked about one to four times a day, and each cow has a necklace to track how many times a day they got milked and what, how much milk they gave. Then each cow has an average about 30 to 32 pounds of milk at each milking. So this is how they work. So the cow will go into the robot and the machine, the robot will automatically recognize the cow's necklace. As you can see, there are other cows in the back uh, waiting to go in. And the robotic milker goes through the milk goes through the sanitation and the milking process by themselves. So once the once the cow is in there, the robot has lasers to recognize where the cow is in space. As you can see, it use, uses these brushes to clean each cow's teat off. And it'll do each each teat at a time. And uh, you can't really see it, but there are little lasers to recognize where each cow's teat is, because each teat is a different size on each cow. Once it goes through each teat, and once it, each teat is cleaned, it will automatically put each inflation on. On a robotic milker, the inflations are all separate. So if one teat is done milking before the other ones, the robot will automatically recognize that and take each one off at a time. As you can see, it gets cleaned twice, once with a dry brush and once with a clean uh, solution.
So in conclusion, all, type of, all types of milking is done with a cow's comfort in mind. Cows like being milked. If you ever get the chance to go to any type of milking system, you'll see the cows are very eager to get milked first. They all do the same job and relatively work in the same way. Although there are different setups, they all work with the farm's safety and the cow's safety in mind. If you wish to learn more, more, your local farmers would love to teach you more about their animals. They work with them every day and they know best. My resources were ResearchGate.net, Barnyard in Your Backyard, Google, Findo Farms, Langdon Farms, and Larry Farms. Any questions? Thank you.